It seems like the whole world is on edge after the attacks this week in Belgium, as well as the recent terror attacks in Paris. Most of the attacks have been blamed on radical Islam, and a lot of people are starting to ask what's causing radical Muslims to attack European targets, and how can it be stopped? Dr. Mordechai Keidar is a lecturer at bar -Ilan University and a specialist in radical Islam, and he also spent more than 25 years in the IDF's military intelligence. He's here with us today to help explain what's causing this phenomenon and what we should expect in the future. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure. So first of all, all these terror attacks in Europe, what's causing them? Where are they coming from? Well, it's very clear. They're coming from Muslims, radical people, who use their ideology in order to topple the West because they don't like the permissiveness and the materialism in the West. And uh, they actually are there in order to spread Islam all over Europe. This is what they say, this is what they mean. Uh, however, they have also more, I would say, recent uh, reasons, uh, which are to retaliate against what Europe is doing, yes or not, to the Islamic State or to other Muslims all over the world. So they don't really need good reasons. They have many reasons which they can employ in order to launch these attacks. Now, I know you've called the war on terror World War III and said it's really the next frontier and people are just starting to realize that it's happening in Europe. Do you think Europe has actually realized it after the recent attacks in Belgium? Well, already Efraim Alevi, the former head of the Mossad, has said this in, uh, after the September 11, 2001. Means like 15 years ago, he already uh, tried to ring the bell and to wake the world up to see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, the world, at least partially, is still slumbering. And uh, this is the problem that uh, uh, intelligence organizations still do not cooperate. Uh, even the French and the Belgian have problems to talk to each other and to uh, share information and to exchange information and to analyze information. Look, even the writing of names, Muhammad, there are at least six, de six ways how this name is written in Europe. So the computers cannot combine this Muhammad to the mm. same man in another country because he's spelled, his name is spelled different way. There is no standard how to write these things in Europe. And this is the problem. There is a U European Union. They, they united the currency. They united many other things. But the way how to register people, they don't still have. It. So this they have to the, the, uh, have, the, uh, have the act uh, together, I think, uh, to, to begin with. And then to start thinking, what do they do with such a big immigration which does not become European? These people live in enclaves, and even if they are not jihadists who will go and, and, and shoot, shoot people, they might help those who shoot people, or host them, or supply whatever they need, these people. Of course, they, were, they are not uh, uh, jihadists, or all the way jihadists, or hardcore jihadists, but even if they are uh, softer core jihadists, they are still dangerous because they support, help, finance, uh, uh, take from place to place or uh, uh, give shelter to those jihadists. And this is the problem, the infrastructure of the terror in Europe is way much bigger than the, what Europeans think. Yeah, it seems like we're seeing that right now as they're still looking for some of the attackers involved in the Paris attacks and having trouble finding them and they've gotten a lot of help N since You then. know, the Europeans have not yet uh, find, found out how they were communicating with each other with cell phones, ciphered social media, dark media, dark net, all kinds of uh, ways how to communicate without being detected by the surveillance uh, uh, units or whatever of the police and the security of Europeans. This is the problem, intelligence. And you know, for, to, uh, in order to have a good war, you need three things, intelligence, intelligence, and intelligence. intelligence. <laughs> Uh, I think that is definitely correct. Now, I want to take it back a little bit to the basics, um, just about Islam in general. In the general discussion right now in the world, a lot of people talk about moderate Islam and radical Islam. You've said there aren't really two kinds, it's just Islam. Could you elaborate on that well, a little bit? In order to, to think that the, there is radical Islam and another Islam, which is moderate Islam, you have to assume that there is radical Quran versus another Quran, which is moderate, or radical uh, Hadith the old tradition versus another kind of hadith which is moderate and so forth. There is no such a thing. There is one Quran, there is one hadith in all tradition, and one biography of Muhammad which they derive the precedence for how to behave in any time, in any, in any situation. Everyone 
every Muslim who takes or picks from the Quran and from the Hadith and from the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad's biography what fits his culture. If he is a moderate man because he grew up in a moderate environment and he internalized the moderate ideas, he will pick from the Quran, from the Hadith and from the precedents of Muhammad everything which supports his culture. And he will be perfect Muslim yet being moderate. Another Muslim who is radical because of uh, environment or because of education, incitement, whatever, he picks from the Quran the radical verses and the radical ideas from the Hadith and the radical precedents from the Prophet Muhammad uh, 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 biography and he will tailor his own Islamic garment with these radical materials as he is also a perfect Muslim. One cannot say that the other one hijacked Islam. Both are basing their teachings and their behavior on the core Islamic sources, the same, the same sources. And this is the problem. Be, uh, uh, there, are no, there is no radical Islam versus moderate Islam. There are radical Muslims versus moderate Muslims, people, individuals, or organizations. If they organize and group two groups or organizations, so you, you get Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State on, those, on the radical side. And there are, uh, if, if there are moderate people, like uh, people in Toronto, for example, um, uh, Muslims facing tomorrow, a very good, very, very moderate uh, organization who wouldn't uh, kill a, a, a mosquito on the wall also. So, and, and, and all are real, good, faithful Muslims because they base whatever they do on the Islamic sources. And this is only in a nutshell. The radicalization happens, definitely. People who come to Europe in order to become Europeans, their children might be radicalized either because of the mosques or because of the social media or something which they saw in the street or something happened to their, uh, to their family by the police or by, by some, somebody and they get radicalized, they go to the mosque or to other sources and they internalize the radical verses from the Quran and the radical ideas from the Hadith and, and they become radicalized and their families usually don't like it because the families who came from the homelands they usually thank the European host country very, very much because of the house and, 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 and food and whatever they got from them. the children has been rad radicalized. I want to use that actually to segue into another question. What you're saying about how it's the children that are being radicalized. Sometimes. You, sometimes. I can't, it can happen. I guess what I'm asking is what, for our final question, what do you think Europe will look like then if nothing changes, if it stays in the st current status quo and they're not changing the organizations, not improving intelligence, and you are having this continued radicalization, will people continue to be radicalized? Will they end up saying, oh, we actually like living here and, you know, let's be moderate? What do you think it will well, look like? two things will determine the, the, the future of Europe. First is the immigration. And the second, the, how this immigration is being treated. Immigration means that the, they are every year more and more foreigners, especially Muslims, and less and less Europeans because of birth rate within, within sure. uh, uh, European societies, the low, low number of children which they bring to the world, if they bring children to the world. So this is mathematics. This is not a matter of, uh, of your standpoint. If one population or one group is, is, is in an increase and the other one is in a decrease, the one, one day the, 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 it will be bigger. This is one thing. Second thing is how they settle in Europe. So far, many Muslims live in enclaves. And in these neighborhoods of either totally or almost totally Muslim population, they preserve their culture, they preserve the violence, they preserve the uh, dis disobedience to the law to the state, to the state law, um, they c continue with all kinds of um, of t habits and traditions which they brought from the homelands, like honor killings and uh, other kinds of violation of violence, and they actually abuse the European societies, especially the girls. Look what happens with, with the rates of rape in Stockholm, in Sweden, a, a, a city which 20 or 25 years ago didn't know what rape is. Today it became the capital of rape in, 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 in Europe. And it's not done by, by Swede men, it's by immigrants. Who view the, the girls, the, the, the European girls, as easy prey, as permitted 
to them because they are not Muslims, they are infidels. So this is the problem. When they come to Europe and they still preserve the culture, the traditions, which they grew up on in the homelands, and they turn Europe actually into an Islam, an Islamic, state, an Islamic country according to the rules of the Hijra. Hijra, as you know, is immigration, but not only uh, to move from a bad place to a better place, but also to spread Islam all over the world, as some of their clerics claim. Well, it sounds like Europe has a big job on their hands. Thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure.